All right, let's uh, try one more practice exercise. Now, this one is all about radial symmetry, and we're going to make this little uh, vase that we see here. I touched on it a little earlier using the uh, when I first started using the Revolve tool, uh, but we're going to try a couple of new things here. Now, this was um, I got this off a of practice uh, little document that One Two Three D used to have when you first launched it, and then I did a couple of other things to it. Um, Let's start by creating a profile to revolve to create uh, the base of the vase. Uh, and I'm going to start with a polyline, and I'm just going to give it 25 millimeters this way, 100 this way, 25 more this way, and leave it alone there. I'm going to add a three-point arc coming down from here. I make sure to edit the existing sketch again, and there we go. Give it a curve there, another three-point arc connecting these two, and then just bow it out like that. Yeah, that looks good. All right. And let me move this stuff over to give myself a little bit of working room. That looks good. All right. I'm going to start revolving this profile around this axis. I'm going to skip the step and just type in 360 here. A little thinner than I was expecting, but that's all right. And uh, I'm pretty much done with that sketch. Don't need that anymore. Uh, I don't like the way this uh, has a little bit of sharpness to it here. So I'm going to see if I'm going to fill it down a little bit to give it a smoother edge. That looks good. All right. Uh, well, you can see that this one's supposed to be hollow. So I'm going to do it to the one I'm working on right now. Uh, let's see. Where's my shell? Shell is right here. Give it a shell. And a little bit of thickness there to work with. All right. Um, the next part is uh, pretty easy. What I've done here um, is I've created just these little kind of squashed uh, hemispheres over here using the primitive. Uh, and I used my smart scale to just squish them down like that. Maybe a little bit more. There. That looks all right. And you know what? Overall, they're still a little big, so I'm going to overall scale them down and bring them up. I'm going to hold off on attaching these to this until I've shown you something else, but I'm going to have that waiting in the wings here. To create the little holes that we see through here, all I need is a sphere. And I'm going to give it a smaller radius, maybe a radius of six. And I'm going to slide it through right there. Enough that I see it poking out on the other side. And I'm going to use a circle pattern using the sphere as the solid and any part of this vase will work for the axis because everything has an axis in, in the very center. It's all an implied axis. So I have that. I'm going to bump it up to 6 and then I'm going to subtract all of these from the base, hit enter, and there I have my little holes. Okay. Now, um, how I did these little indents is, is a pretty neat little trick. What I had to do first, I, I got to switch into orthographic view and come at it straight from the top. And actually for this, I need to actually see the outline so that I know that I'm not going to dig too deep. I'm going to draw myself a spline going across like this, going into the um, the wall of the vase, but not all the way through. And, and I confirm that I'm not going all the way through because I can see the outline there. I'm going to stop my spline here, connect it with that, and just solidify it. Okay. Now, we saw before that a revolution is an extrusion. And remember, when you extrude something and it passes through an existing solid, um, your extrusion turns into a negative volume. So when I start revolving this sketch around and through a solid object, look at that, it's red. So it's cutting across the surface like a knife. And when I get all the way around 360, look at that. I get a neat little indent there. And I can just take this and bring it up somewhere else. Let's try uh, maybe up here. Now for this again I have to go into outline view to make sure that I'm not doing anything too crazy. 
re uh, realign myself with orthographic, and do that. Cut across there, and give it another revolution. And you can make that shape, you know, you can make it rounded, you can make it sharp, you can make it whatever you want. There. That's looking pretty nice. Uh, you know what? Let's just do one more down here. Switch to outlines. Rotate it. And uh, one more revolution. That's the profile. This is the axis, 360 degrees. Hit my enter, and there we go. Looking pretty neat. Then all I gotta do is snap the bottom of this onto one of these. Look at it from maybe a side here where I can uh, check to see. Yeah, it's sticking out too far, so I'm just gonna pop it in there. And then all I gotta do is basically just circle pattern this around, which might be a little bit difficult because I have to still choose the whole object. So I'm gonna see if it lets me and use this as the axis. Okay, yes, it didn't have any trouble there. And I think it's because I clicked it close to this edge right here. I was getting some invalid operations before when I just clicked anywhere on that hemisphere. Anyway, I give it, you know, eight repetitions and there I am. I can do the same exact thing up at the top. Bring it up here and actually I'm going to snap this to that, make it way smaller so it doesn't look so unnatural there. There we go. And you know what? Let's snap it again just to recenter it. I do have this this thing in my way, so I'm just going to I'm going to hide all these. These are getting in my way. There. And you know what? Orthographic isn't helping much either. So sometimes I get I get a little disoriented when I don't use perspective. You might too, but that's up to you. All right, we'll move that in a little bit more, just like we did with the first one. And circle pattern. Maybe I'll do a whole bunch more. So there we go. That's pretty much ready to um, just be recolored a little bit for, again, cosmetic purposes. I'm going to give it a matte plastic with a kind of deep brown there. Makes it look kind of bronze-ish. Uh, and then I just select these guys. And let's see. What's a good material for this? I'm going to see what happens if we do like a glass. Nah. Give it a gold. There we go. That doesn't look too bad. And we'll do something with these. There. Grab those and let's see, can I give them a kind of little emerald color? Never know how the textures are going to mix with the actual hue you give them, but I try my best. So there is our completed kind of antique looking vase here. Uh, and that's going to wrap it up for the uh, sample exercises for the class. Of course, uh, I'll be posting videos if I discover, you know, any new interesting techniques, new ways to do something. I do still have the uh, threaded screw uh, video that, that I promised you to do. But at this point, you, you pretty much know everything that I can teach you about a 1, 2, 3D design. Uh, so I hope you guys uh, get out there and start making some, some cool things to, uh, to animate or, or 3D print. And I'll look forward to, to seeing what you guys can whip up. See you around.